Good afternoon. I'm Mark Thurston, and I'm the Senior Fellow for the Center for Consciousness and Transformation at New Century College, which is a exciting project funded by the Delasky Family Foundation. But we're here to celebrate another aspect of Don Delasky's life, which is the publication this fall of his memoir. And we are very pleased that you all could join us today for this event to celebrate his publication and to get a Christmas gift, which is going to be a copy of the book, which is Don. Don's also available to uh, sign your book before you leave today. So before both Dr. Merton and Don come up to uh, share a few remarks about this uh, publication, I wanted to say just a little bit about my friend Don Velasky, who certainly over the last few years become one of my best friends. Um, I met Don and his late wife Nancy more than 30 years ago when they came to some lectures that I was giving at conferences in Virginia Beach, but it was more recently, about five years ago, when they came to some courses that my wife Mary Elizabeth and I were putting on for the Personal Transformation Courage Institute that Mary's president of, and we got to be friends through those courses. But at one of the courses, there was a pairs exercise, and we had an odd number of people at the course. So Mary got me to step in to make the even-numbered person, and by lot, it turned out that Don was my partner. And there was an exercise that involved, a, a, it's called inquiry, back and forth of asking a question. And the question was, what do you long for in your life? And when Don was repeatedly asking me that question, one of the answers that came out of me was, I long to have more men friends. And after the course, Don said to me, I'd like to be one of your men friends. <laughs> and in the years thereafter, our friendship really blossomed. And one of the fruits of that friendship has been this project that was two or three years in the, in the making. There was a lot going on in Don's life as his memoirs were being written. And it was a real blessing and joy for me to get to work with him on this project. I've been involved in lots of publications over the years as author, co-author, editor, and so forth. And there's no publication I'm more proud of than this particular book that came out in October. And I think that uh, as you read it, you're certainly reading about Don's life, but you're also reading about your own life, because Don's life story has certain universal archetypal patterns in his journey that I think you'll recognize in your own journey. Uh, Don invited me to write with a preface for the book and a little introduction to each chapter to kind of frame some of the themes. And I think that what we tried to feature was how life is a transformation. And our center is appropriately labeled, I think, with that, that word in it. Now last fall, fall, fall semester 2009, Don came every Wednesday to my undergraduate class, Consciousness, Meaning, and Life Purpose, which is the gateway course for our undergraduate minor in Consciousness and Transformation. He did the readings, he wrote the papers, and so forth. And one of the exercises was a drawing exercise, and it involved taking a big piece of paper and oil crayons and drawing the key elements of your life and then drawing lines to connect things, because meaning is largely about the connections that we have in our lives. And I think as you read Don's memoirs, you're going to see all the fabulous connections that emerged for him as he wrote. But what I found as a reader of the book was it was helping me make connections in my own life beginning to see how things from my past and my present and, my, and the potential of my future are linked together. And I think you'll have that same kind of experience yourself as you read the book. So I'm going to invite um, Dr. Merton, our university president, to come up and make a few remarks. And I want to mention that my favorite picture in the whole book is on page 240 that you'll be seeing. And it's a picture of Dr. Merton with Don at Mount Vernon. And it's classic. Dr. Burton. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Don. Thank all of you for your support of George Mason University and for all that you do for the entire George Mason family. And thank you for what we've all had the opportunity to do for Don, for and with Don and, and his family. When I think of Don Delasky, I sort of think of stories, just as the book is about stories. But I think I'm also about myself and what I do over the years is, is storytelling. And let me tell a quick story about Don that really positions 
Don, for me, positions Don in the book. Soon after um, one of the major events that we had in the then Department of Music, now the School of Music, we were at the Delaskis. And everybody was celebrating the success of the, the music uh, activities of the summer for, for high school students, etc. Don and I are standing in the corner, and it's, it's a beautiful event, and he looks at me and he says, you know why I enjoy supporting what you do at George Mason? And when you start a conversation out that way, you always wonder where someone's going to go. <laughs> and he said, well, what I like about what you do, I like that you make things happen. He said, I have ideas. I pass those ideas on to people, and, and things happen. And he said, I, I just really like that. And if you look at Don's book, that's what the story of Don Delasky is. He makes things happen. And then he looked at me and he said, you know, the other reason I like doing things with you? I said, no, Don, what is it? He said, I have fun doing things with you guys. And that's the other half, or at least a big chunk of the book. It's in a sense making things happen and making sure that we have fun making them happen, just as Don has made things happen, and how Don has done it, it with a cheerful manner, and it's affected not only all of us, but many, many people. Well, I've read most of the book, and I will finish it, but when I read the book, there's sort of themes in the book that keep coming back and forth. The first is Don's unabashed statement of his investment in himself as he moved from, through the transportation, what he had to learn what he became each step of the way, and that in a sense it was an investment in self. The second theme that is in the book, and is part of who Don is, is the investment in family. Again, every step of the way, every transformation. How does, how does this benefit the family? How is the family moving along? And in, in, in a sense, that's, that's a, 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 a one of the themes. The third theme, a big chunk of the book, is an investment in every possible way, in time, and money, and energy, in the company. The recognition of not only the company as something that was going to support individuals, but that the company was going to make a difference in the businesses that it impacted, not only the business that he was in. So this, this investment, this transformation of the company, and his investment in that. And then fourthly, the book, the, another theme of, of the, a strong theme of the book, is the investment in community in so many different ways. And the community could be Mount Vernon. The community could be so many different activities that he was involved in. Fortunately for us at George Mason University, the investment in the George Mason community. George Mason University is a different place because of what so many people have done for us. We, as many of you in the room know, we, we, we are constantly being visited. Tom Hennessy and others around the room, Bill, I mean, we, if we don't have a visitor someday, we wonder what's wrong, right, Jack? I mean, where's, where's, where's today's foreign visitor? I mean, there, people come from everywhere. They, they want to learn more about what we do at George Mason University, how we have transformed ourselves, and how we have transformed ourselves through what people have done for us. So there's a lot of responsibility that we have. We could have not gotten to where we are, and we cannot get to the next step without the kind of support along the nature of what Don has given us. I hope that you would take the book, and read the book, and enjoy the book, enjoy the stories, and then enjoy your own stories. Thank you. You still having fun? Yeah. You still having fun? <laughs> But thank you all for coming. I didn't invite anybody here myself. I didn't even know who was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see who's here. So glad you gave a, on a cold Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon, or really something. And thank you, uh, Dr. Martin, for your kind of remarks and so forth. Uh, I did have a lot of fun writing this book. <laughs> and uh, very exciting, and it's uh, very exciting to be here. And uh, I think that. Uh, the, uh, if it weren't for uh, uh, Mark Thurston, however, it just would not have happened. Uh, we were, uh, he mentioned to you earlier how we got together with these different things. We were out at my place and I was, we were talking and uh, he said, you know, I, I think you should write a book about your life. 
And I said, how in the world can I do that? I've never written a book in my life, and I, uh, I can't even type very well on a computer, and uh, I just don't know how to do that. He said, well, he said, don't worry about typing it up. Uh, I'll set up my office so that you can, uh, all you gotta do is call up on the telephone and dictate. And a girl in my office will take care of writing, writing it all up. Oh, okay, that kind of how neat. So anyway, I got started, and um, but I never never did dictate anything to your office, and it, it really flowed very easily. It was a lot of fun, uh, and uh, I spent. Uh, it was a three-year period, but on the other hand, it was not uh, uh, consistent because I waited from time to time and got involved in something else, or and my wife was looking like she was going to pass on, so. I was going through a tough time in my life. I just wanted to hold it off for a while and then come back and finish it later, which I did. But anyway, um, I think that, uh, but you know, I got a lot of help from other people in writing this book other than Mark. Um, most members of my family have got uh, early copies of the book and edited it. And uh, we call up and give me comments about this. And my. Uh, Sister was with Don, you talk too much about money. You mentioned this much money and this much money and this much money. But then other people said they like the money because you know <laughs> you, you read these stories that people talk about a lot of money. You don't know whether they're talking about a million dollars or hundred million, you don't know what they're talking about. So I mentioned money from time to time, which uh, is kind of open, but as I said, the members of the uh, family and uh, Mark's son even came and uh, uh, with us and he, he's kind of a IT expert and photographs and so he, he's responsible for a lot of the pictures of the book and uh, we, he drove around with us and we uh, went to many of the places where I lived and some of my offices uh, because I did grow up in Tacoma Park which is the same place Mark grew up kind of interesting. So we saw his early house as well. <laughs> that was quite amazing that uh, these things uh, were so synchronistic, you know. And so uh, he took pictures of things and my wife would help me re remember things that I had forgotten. Um, Dr. Martin was just asking me, did any research or, or somebody else was asking about research and uh, I didn't, never did any research. <laughs> just, like, when was it when such and such happened? And she would tell me. So that would be very uh, easy. <laughs> but, um, uh, throughout my book, uh, I, I mentioned angels a lot. And I'm very much uh, convinced that uh, angels are helping me in my life. And uh, well, just like Mark said, he was looking for a man friend. And uh, I just happened to be his partner. And I feel that angels are bringing me together with people. But angels work, I think, with uh, everybody benefits when you come together, both parties benefit. So maybe it was Mark's angel, or maybe it was my angel, who knows, but it doesn't really matter. The point of it is that angels are helping us uh, in our life, and uh, they're always there for us. And. Uh, I feel that's made a big difference in my life. Uh, in fact, I um, was once asked by someone, how did, how did you ever get started writing, uh, and starting your company called Dell Tech, which is my computer company that I started? I said, well, it was just like Forrest Gump. And I had just gotten through reading uh, or seeing that movie about Forrest Gump and he started his business, a shrimp boat business, just just happened to be in the right place at the right time. So uh, I thought he was, he, I said to myself, he just made things happen, just things just happened. And so that's when this title of the book came up, Letting Life Happen. So Forrest Gump might have something to do with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And now I, uh, Mark's going to say a few more words. And Mark, thanks again for all you've done for me. It's very beautiful. Thank you. I'm actually going to read just a few short excerpts from the book. 
But before I do, I want to thank Don and Shirley for coming out today. And please be sure each one of you to say hi to them before um, you get away and get your copy of the book. And I also want to mention some ways that we're going to be using this book. Um, we got the book co-published by the Personal Transformation and Courage Institute and ARE Press, a small press in Virginia Beach. And actually, um, 750 people who were longtime members of that organization got copies of the book sent to them, the little cover letter. And so we're beginning to hear comments back from people reading the book from that audience. I'm going to be using this book um, in the spring semester for my capstone course for the undergraduate minor on consciousness and transformation. That course is called Consciousness and Transformation in Action. And I think Don's life story is exemplary about taking principles about spirituality and mindfulness and putting them into action, as Dr. Merton was saying. And then Mary Elizabeth's going to teach a course in the fall on intuitive reasoning. and plans to use this book as part of that course as well because there's so many excellent stories of using intu intuition as part of Don's life story and his business life as well as his personal life. So, just a few excerpts. I want to read to you how the book begins and how it ends and then just a little bit about the uh, founding of our Consciousness Center here at George Mason. So Don says, when I was four years old in 1936, and you can do the arithmetic, <laughs> I lived on Ruby Avenue in Marblehead, Massachusetts, an oceanfront town in the northeast suburbs of Boston. I'd been an asthmatic child since the age of two. One day as I was just getting over an asthma attack that had come on quite suddenly, my mother told me to go lie down in the hammock in the backyard and just have a rest. There I was, looking up at the sky and contemplating all the various cloud formations. Suddenly a door opened in the middle of a large cloud and a loud voice said, Hello Donald, I love you. I don't remember much of what my response was to this voice, but I know I told the voice that I wanted to come there and be with him. He replied that would happen much later, but in the meantime, he had a lot for me to do. He also promised that he and his angels would always be with me. So that's how the book begins, and the chapter is even called In the Hammock. Now skipping way forward to chapter 18, there's a little section about higher consciousness in a new university center. And Don writes, throughout most of my adult life, I have attended many seminars and read a lot of books related to higher consciousness. My interest in spirituality and consciousness goes back to my early college years, as I described earlier, when I was attending Duke University, and I was required to take a religion course. I elected one on Eastern religions. Whenever I have studied a religion, as a college student or into my later years, I've always looked for the proof of what people believe. That is, I've had a deep curiosity and feeling of inquiry about things spiritual and anything related to an expanded picture of who we are. I believe that in today's world, there is much more openness to topics such as consciousness and expanded human potentials. And a university setting is perfect because most college students would prefer to use the scientific method to learn about raising consciousness than to rely on religions. The faculty at George Mason will be getting far more support for their programs there than was ever given J.B. Ryan at Duke University or Ian Stevenson at the University of Virginia with their centers. I think that this program has a huge potential and could help change the world. And then at the very end of the book, Don returns to the theme about the voice. This is the very last paragraph. I'm certainly glad that I set up the Delasky Family Foundation. This has given a lot of meaning to my life, but meaningfulness is not the same as happiness. When I'm gone, others will carry on the foundation. I think I might experience the most happiness by just doing things for others. I was recently on a Unity Church retreat, and the leader of a guided meditation instructed us to think back to our earliest childhood memory. Immediately I thought of my experience in the hammock, which I related in chapter one. In the meditation, I again told the voice that I loved him and wanted to come up and be with him. And again, he said that he had more for me to do. <laughs> so Don, congratulations.
So we invite you just to uh, continue to have some refreshments. Uh, come say hi to Don and Shirley. Come up and have a book autograph. And happy holidays to everybody. Thanks for coming today.